Hello and welcome to The Olive Tree with me, Julia Fisher, where all the stories you hear on this program are from Jewish and Arab believers living in the Holy Land. Today we hear from Peter Nasser, an Arab Christian married to a Jewish girl called Yarden. We'll hear her story next week. If you think that's unusual, then you'll be even more surprised to hear that they're both evangelists with Jews for Jesus in Israel. Peter was born and grew up in a small Arab village in the north of Israel. His parents were Christians and he enjoyed a peaceful and uncomplicated early life. I asked him how he felt towards Israel and the Jewish people as a young man. Well, I didn't really have any problem back in my childhood because I was kind of isolated from Jewish or, you know, everything was surrounded me in Arabic. I did not really have to face any Jewish thing. But then in age 18, I moved to Tel Aviv, where then I started to interact with Jewish. I started here and then I started to really realize there is a problem between Jewish and Arabs. I mean, yes, I heard the news, I know all about the stories, but personally, I did not have anything to do with it. So I just didn't really react until I came here in age 18 in Tel Aviv, and I started to feel the hatred toward me from the Jewish people. And so my reaction was hating them back. That's what developed in age 18. But then really uh, the story go on until I really reached the point that I hate all what is included in Israel. I did not want to do anything with it, so I wanted to see the world as I thought I wanted to. And I started to travel. I went uh, to Switzerland, I had some friends there, and I lived there for one year, and I was almost got married. But then after the second year, we broke up, and I was really upset, and I was really mad about God. But then I said to myself, no, but I can't go back to Israel. I have to go on. I have to search for my life. At that point, I really just wanted to live my life quiet and simple and and peace. And then I moved to Australia, where I found the guy that promised me a job and everything. He just stole my money. He stole my things. And uh, I was in Australia and Sydney alone with nothing. Actually, in Sydney, I met a missionary called Jonathan, and uh, he's from England. And he was uh, in Australia giving tracts and uh, talking to people about God. And so, for while I was sitting, really all with my thoughts in my head, and like mad and smoking and everything, I noticed something strange about him. I noticed peace, even that he wasn't really wanted there so much, but still he had peace and love for the people. And so I uh, approached him and said, hey, you know, who you are and what you're doing? I asked him, so what's your key, you know, for your happiness? And his simple answer was, uh, Jesus. And I said, that can't be, you know. I know about Jesus. I went to church and I did this and this. Nothing happened to me like what you're saying. Um, So he said to me, well, you know, you have to know Jesus, personally, not about Jesus. I did not really understand that much about it that time. So I went with him about half a year in Australia. He took me wherever he went. While he was really teaching me the Bible, and I was crying to him about my life. But I didn't decide then. I was so close to believe, but I did not believe yet. I still had hope for myself, for trying to find my life. And so I moved to New Zealand. And New Zealand, I have a brother that he hosted me there, and I thought to myself, okay, this is life. I have whatever I want. I will find a job here. Everybody is good here. But I just couldn't get a job, couldn't get anything, and I just was wasting my time on the internet. And then my brother said to me, you know what, instead of wasting your time on the internet, why don't you just read books, you know, that's better at least. And so he gave me books and one of them was the Bible. And that was really the first time I read the Bible. (laughs) I knew a lot about Jesus, but not from the Bible. 
And so I started really to read the Bible, and soon enough I found that I'm really far away from to be called Christian or to be called son of God or whatever, you know. And I just, that time, I confessed my sins. And as the Bible says, you know, it will take my burden, and it, it did. It take all my burden, all my hate, all my sufferings. God replaced it with joy and peace. That time I say to my brother, you know what? I really have love for the Jewish people, for the, uh, all the world, really. And it's weird for me. I really hated all these people, you know, learned how to hate them, how to despise them, and don't want to deal any of them. And then suddenly I just have really peace for them. And so I came back to Israel. I didn't really know what to do or what do I want to do here. But so I started to go out with some people from the church to evangelize and everything. And uh, with the time I, there, I, I met Yaden. She was evangelizing and I was evangelizing. And we started to evangelize together for three years in occasions where, you know, there is uh, some festivals or something like that. And so we started to evangelize together. After three years, we got married. And uh, during these three years, we met with Jews for Jesus, and then we kind of started to evangelize with them until we're now in staff. Peter, you've put your story into a nutshell. It's an extraordinary story. How you traveled around the world, how you became a Christian, you came back to Israel with a heart for the Jewish people, you found an Israeli wife, a Jewish wife. What did your family and what did Yarden's family make of you wanting to get married? Well, that time, my dad's concern was more like because he saw my life and he saw my suffering here before I came to faith and I, how I wanted to leave Israel. And he was concerned. He was like, well, you know, this could be a problem for you. You know, you're marrying Israeli. Your children will need to serve in the army. And, you know, Christians here, we don't really have to serve in the army. My dad was concerned about, like, she's Jewish and she will tell you to keep this, keep that, and this. And it's not one of our own. And uh, we had a hard time to kind of let my dad be okay with that. It took at least one year or something like this that my dad finally saw in Yarden, oh, She's like us. <laughs> she's a believer and she's like us. Because it's, it's not really common here to marry from different nation or different culture, and especially between Jewish and Arabs, which are like different cultures. Arabs, they don't like the idea to be involved with the Jewish people on that level, of course. So they really, my dad was concerned. And then after one year, he really was, you know, he accepted her and everything. And now everything is good. From her side, that was another issue. Uh, her dad is really secular Jewish and he did not concern that much. I had problems with her mom. <laughs> so, but now everything is good now. Just tell me what it's like when you go out onto the streets with your Jews for Jesus t-shirt on, evangelizing to Jewish people. What do they say to you? Do you surprise them? Well, indeed, it's odd for them and really something strange. They can recognize me. I'm an Arab when I speak to them. And so they would start, you know, to question. So if you're an Arab, why would you want to come to us and talk about Jesus? You know, of course, there's some, the opposition would say, oh, go to Iraq, go to Palestine and tell them about Jesus. I say, well, don't worry. There's also people there telling them about Jesus, but I'm here to tell you. So, but yeah, and the general response is really like, why? Why would you do such a thing? Why, why do you care even, you know, for us? I mean, if you're saying, Jesus, who is Jesus, why do you care for us, you know? Um, okay, it's good for you. Why do you want to tell me about that? And of course, I tell them uh, my story a little bit and, you know, about the love that God has, you know, put in my heart for them and uh, about the loss that, you know, they will lose the salvation. And uh, that gives them in enough interest that to know, you know, okay, you know what, I want to hear about that. And they would 
would sign up for you know follow up information and uh, and then I go to visit them and you know tell them about uh, you know more about Jesus. Actually, uh, one of the Jewish guys that I connected with him, today he's a believer, very strong believer, but he had the same problem as me. He hated Israel, even that he was Jewish. And we could really connect so much. And, uh, you know, God used my story to show him like, oh, I'm an Arab and I love now Israel. There's something need to be, you know, there's something in this, not just you know, and he's Jewish and he doesn't like Israel and doesn't like the Jewish people here. Not because, you know, he's anti-Jewish, but just because of their, you know, behavior and, you know, different stuff. But yeah, now he's today, he's really a believer and very active in the church and very nice. It's it's really a blessing for me to share with the Jewish people, you know, how, how I am Arab coming to tell them about Jesus. And the streets, they always, you know, comments and that. And they're more concerned, really more concerned about this issue, about why I'm an Arab coming to tell them about Jesus than, you know, whole being of the, the Arab and Jewish conflict. That's more interesting for them. Peter Nasser, an Arab Christian on the team of Jews for Jesus in Israel, a remarkable story. You're listening to The Olive Tree with me, Julia Fisher. And next week, we'll hear from Peter's Jewish wife, Yarden. This couple are so unusual, it's no wonder their story causes people to sit up and take notice. But life is challenging for them, so how can we help? The Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund, a small charity based in the UK, supports needy Arab and Jewish believers. You can find articles, programs and information about our tours to Israel on our website www.olivetreefund.org where you can also leave a donation. If you'd like to receive our free bi-monthly newsletter, please either email inquiries at olivetreefund.org or write to me, Julia Fisher, at the Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund, PO Box 850, Horsham, RH12, 9GA in the UK. I'll be back at the same time next week for another story from the Olive Tree. Until then, goodbye.